Alright guys, starting off with the external build. Testing it outside and putting it in the case. Part 1, installing the CPU. Let's get to it. Starting off, prepare a nice workspace, clear the desk out, and you can start working. So you want to take out your motherboard and place it on anti-static surface, anti-static mat, or your motherboard box. Then you want to go ahead, go ahead and ground yourself uh, to prevent any static discharges from happening. You can do this by touching your case or a grounded socket. Now step one. Step one is to push on this latch and then release it. This will allow you to go to the socket where you can install the CPU. The CPU has a little triangle on it, you can see here. You want to align this triangle with the little golden dot that there is on one of the corners of the motherboard. Additionally, there are dents in the CPU which you can align with the little bumps on the socket. Step two is you want to take the CPU and you just want to place it into the socket. Do not push. The latch will do all the work. You want to push down the latch. Be careful. And it should fall into place. Now you do not, you don't be too scared at this point because you will hear noises and the cover will come off. But that's all right. The cover should come off and everything will be good. Right. We can move on to the rest. All right, guys. Part two. Preparing the CPU cooler. Let's go. The CPU cooler is comprised of a few parts, so there's the fan, the radiator, and the CPU block. So we're going to screw in um, this fan onto the radiator. So step one is to align the fan onto the radiator. Step two is to take a screw, put it through the fan, and make it go into the radiator. Once you see that everything is aligned properly, you want to start screwing it in. Preferably use a screwdriver to your fingers, uh, so you can see we're going to screw it in. This part is quite simple, there's really not that much that you need to know. So here you can see that I've screwed everything in. So we're going to move on to connect the fan into the CPU cooler, which is going to power the fans and control their speed. Here you can see that the fan 3-pin connector, we're basically going to be connecting it into an adapter. This adapter will then relay the fan into the CPU cooler. We'll just do that quickly right now. So here we're basically going to plug in then the adapter into the cooling block. But we're, we're just, I'm just showing you how to do it here. We're going to do this later on once it's installed onto the motherboard uh, to leave us the flexibility we need. Alright, moving on to part 3, installing the CPU cooler. Let's go, guys. Okay, so here we're going to basically be mounting the backplate onto the motherboard. The back plate allows us, this black plate here allows us to mount a CPU cooling block. It acts as a support and takes the strain from the motherboard to the back plate metal piece. So you want to go ahead and put in these little holes there. You don't want to really touch anything around the motherboard because you don't want to damage it. You just want to place the back plate incorrectly. It's really useful to have a friend in this situation which can help you mount the back plate. Once this is done, you want to go ahead and lift these, take these little razors, they're screws, and just want to screw them into the hole which will in the motherboard, which will allow you to screw it basically into the back plate. There's four of these, and you want to screw all four of them in. And basically, you'll be mounting your CPU onto these razors, and depending on what type of socket you have, you'll have to use different razors, so you want to go ahead and read in your booklet that came with your CPU cooler which ones you want to use. So now we're going to be applying thermal compound onto the CPU. So what thermal compound, this little thing, it's a little liquid sort of gel thing. What it does, it allows better heat dissipation between the CPU and the cooler. It gives better tr heat transfer, hence increasing the cooling performance of your cooler. Now there's a lot of debate debates out there how you want to actually apply this, but it doesn't really matter. I like to apply it in a linear manner. So you want to go ahead and just push it, put a little of it, don't overdo this, because too much is not going to be good, you just want to have the right amount. Once this is done, you want to think of the following thing. How is your cooler going to sit in your case? Once you've visualized it, you want to go ahead and place the cooler in the best manner, so that the tubing and all of that stuff just doesn't get in the way. So mine sits like this. So 
So the next step is just to um, screw it onto the razors. So the next step is really simple. All you have to do is just screw in the CPU block onto the motherboard. So what you do is you just take the little screws that came with the CPU and you screw them into the razor, as you can see that I'm doing here. And when you're screwing these in, you have to be careful. You want to apply vertical pressure, not side to side. So the next screw you're putting in will be on the opposite side of it, not next to it. This will uh, give better uh, spread of pressure throughout the CPU, which will reduce the chance of having it damaged. Now that you have all of them screwed in, you want to go ahead and tighten them. Don't over-tighten them because you don't want to destroy your CPU. You just want to have the right amount of tightness there, not too much, too, too much pressure going onto the CPU. All right, next step. We're going on to the RAM. Let's do this. Part 4, installing the RAM. Easy. Okay, so in this step we're going to be installing the RAM. We finished installing the CPU. Now we're going to be moving on. So you want to first of all go and look in the booklet that comes with your motherboard. Which slots you have to actually install the RAM in if you're not using all of them. In my case, I have to install it into the red slots if I'm not using all of my RAM sticks. So you just want to, first of all, pop open these little latches. Only the ones you're going to be using, of course. That's step one. Step two is to take your RAM, of course, and find the little dent there is in it. This dent prevents you from aligning the RAM the wrong way around in your dim sockets. So you want to find the little bump there is on the dim socket, and you just want to push the RAM in in a manner so they align up and they fit perfectly. You can go ahead and put a little bit of force in this situation, but be careful not to break your motherboard. That's done. It was really easy, as I told you, and we're going to just move on to the graphics cards. The interesting part. Alright, graphics cards. Awesome stuff. Let's do this. So now we're going to be installing the graphic cards. This is very similar to installing the RAM. You have to first find which slots you're going to be putting it in. Depending on how many cards you have, the slots you might be installing them might vary. So you want to go ahead and look in your booklet and find which ones you'll be installing in it, like you did with the RAM. So in my case, it's just this slot and this slot that I'll be installing in. So just like the RAM, step one is to pop down the latch. Step two is to align the bump with the dent in the socket. You also want to uh, put your motherboard at the edge of the table because this little extra part will be basically passing the motherboard and will be hitting into the table. So you want some extra space so it can just droop, da droop down. Step four is just to push everything in. Just like the uh, RAM, you might need a bit of force. And then it'll click into place. I did that with both of my graphic cards. Now step five is to take this thing called the SLI bridge. And it will be allowing our graphic cards to work together as one. So you just want to push them in. And that's done. We're ready to be testing. We're just going to plug in the power supply and soon test. So a little tricky part, connecting everything to the PSU, power supply unit. So now we're going to basically be connecting everything up to the PSU and just powering all of this up. But before that, we just want to connect the cooler into the motherboard. So this is really simple. We just take the 3-pin CP CPU connector. It's called 3-pin three three because it has 3 pins. Just want to connect it into the CPU connector, which is on the motherboard. It's labeled CPU, uh, and we just push it in, connected. Next step is to just power up the motherboard. This is done with the 24-pin connector. Just clicks into its socket. Next, we want to power up the CPU. So that's the 8-pin CPU connector. This one as well goes into the motherboard. You can see it's pretty easy to find. It's eight pins. Just connect it. Just click it in. Next, we're going to be powering up the graphic cards. This is done with the PCIe connector. You just take them. It's two per graphic cards, and you just click them in as well. Now that that's done, we'll be connecting in the CPU cooler into the power. However, before connecting it to this uh, PSU, you just want to connect the fans into the CPU, 
like I said before, we're going to do it now. You just want to take the adapters from the fans and just plug it into the CPU cooling block, like this. All is good. We're just going to finish off by plugging in the CPU, CPU cooler into the power supply. So this is done via a connection called SATA connection. The same connectors are used for powering up things like hard drive SSDs. So it's pretty simple. When building a PC, it's really simple to power everything up. It just like find the right block and connect it. It's just matching things up and connecting them. It's pretty instinctive. Moving on to posting. Power on self-test. Just to check if the computer works. Now what you want to do is just turn on the power supply. You can see green lights are on, that's good. You also want to be sure that your graphic card is connected to the screen. Then you want to click on the start button. This will turn on your power, uh, your external build, soon to be P PC. So you can see fans are turning, that's good. Uh, hopefully it will turn on. This is when every builder gets their mini heart attacks, just to see if everything's built correctly. Oh la la, is it going to work? Hopefully it will. Yep, okay, that's good. The screen is turning on. Now, if you have a keyboard connected, you can go into the BIOS, and this is just the firmware. You can just check around settings and all that stuff. All right, we'll be moving on to installing everything into the case. Let's do this, people. We're getting closer and closer.